Good day and welcome to Class Time, your daily classroom for CSEC students. Watch this lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. Also, a repeat later on JNN at 5 p.m. In today's lesson, we will be looking at problem solving in measurement and statistics. I'm Denise Bailey. And I'm Shadine Cassie. So today we're looking, as we said, at measurement and um, statistic, um, problem solving, featuring the measurement and statistic. Right. So looking at problem solving, we're mm -hmm. going to start out with this quote to say that it is better to solve one problem five different ways than to solve five problems one way. Yes. Denise, yes. what's your opinion on this statement? I am in agreement with this gentleman, um, Mr. Pollia, George Pollia, who, who is saying to us that if we can build up our repertoire, our skill sets, then we'll be better able to solve multiple problems outside of whenever we work at solving problems many different ways. We always have a choice. Right. So that is one of the things that we want to look at today. So it gives us options. Options. Right. So, so when problems come, different problems come, we can you. find a different, always pull. Yes. A different strategy, that right? That is correct. Yes. That so is correct. Let's move on. So our colleagues before would have been looking at pro a series of problem solving lessons. Mm -hmm. So let's just recap what the problem solving sequence includes. Yes. Go ahead, Denise. Okay. So um, the same George Polia, George Polia he, he came up with this strategy um, sequence. We have to understand the problem, see what the problem is talking about. We have to devise a plan, know what to do to solve the problem. Right. We have to action that plan yes. and then look back to see if the problem that we set out to solve in the first place was actually solved. So you don't just get a problem and then you start solving, that right? You try to follow the sequence. So make sure to understand, yes. have a plan, yes. do the plan or carry out the yes. action and then we can go back and double check to see that the plan worked. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that is what we'll be using today. So just to recap, when we say problem solve in the problem Problem solving sequence, understand the problem to see. We're basically asking some questions. What am I trying to find? And in that, we tell what the question is asking. What do I know? Because you have to understand to right. be so able to Right, so by reading solve. and interpreting the awesome. question, based on what you would have read, mm -hmm. what do I know? Mm -hmm. Identify key facts and details. Yes, yes. Right. Um, in the sequence, we have devise a plan. And hmm. in devising a plan, mm -hmm. we need some strategies, right? Yes. What strategy or strategies should I try? And oh. here are some suggestions. Some, yes. because there are multiple ways to solve problems. But as was said before, if we become astute in using any one of these, then we're able to apply it to multiple situations. Yes. Right? Unrelated situations. Unrelated or situations. we could just merge some of these techniques. Which is, or, which is true, which is true. Or strategies to come up with a solution or with a plan. That right. is right. So some of these are act mm -hmm. out, make a drawing or a diagram, mm -hmm. look for a pattern, construct a table, guess and check, work backwards, solve a simpler or similar problem, use reasoning and write an equation. Good. And there are others, right. but we'll just stick to these for, for now. now. Yes. Mind you, we'll not use all of them, but no. they are options. It's good to have options. So in carrying out, out the plan, mm -hmm. what does this mean? You do it. You do it, yes. right? What can I show? What can I show the problem? Mm -hmm. Try drawing a picture. Yep. You could do that depending on what the situation requires. Making a table or a graph or act it out. Do some form of modeling. And mm -hmm. what does acting it out means for you? I'm doing a math problem. How do I act it out? bringing it into the real life space. If, if, if I'm in an area where I have manipulatives, let us say, for example, or anything within the real context, I can take up my, my unit cubes 
perhaps, or I can use my duster or my eraser as a props to help me to better clarify and understand the problem. Right, and there Mass. might be m other things in the environment that you can pull from, your strings, your rulers, whatever you could your find. Clock, you, your your shoes, clock, your shoes, yes. anything. And yes. in doing this, we are making a model. Yes, right. that is it, that is it. Now, how will I solve the problem? Mm -hmm. Is what is the answer? Can I tell the answer in a complete sentence? Mm -hmm. Is it a one word answer? Mm -hmm. Is it a whole paragraph? Mm -hmm. Or is it is the answer just numbers? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, all are all things for us to consider, right? Good. And afterwards we have to look back. Make sure mm -hmm. that our answer is reasonable. Yes. It fits the situation. Yes. All right. Dare so, I say it answers the questions that we were asked originally. From the interpretation. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So did check my work. Mm -hmm. So when I, did you check your work? When I check my work, I can compare my work to the information in the problem. Mm -hmm. Did I answer the question correctly? Mm -hmm. Be sure all calculations are correct. Mm -hmm. So you're not multiplying and then adding instead of you were to carry out a multiplication Station. problem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes these things do happen when you're actually trying to concentrate. Yes. So yes, it's human error. Yes. Yeah. Focus. Is my answer reasonable? Estimate to see if my answer makes sense. Make sure the question was answered. Yes. So in order to look back or to check, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the original question. Yes. All right. Yes. And I suggest that we, we do this consistently um, outside of exam um, situations, outside of the classroom setting, inside the classroom setting, so that it becomes a part of our right. problem solving um, technique and skill. So in other words, what you're trying to tell us is that make problem solving, the problem solving sequence a part of our everyday activities. I, I would strongly agree that. And once we do that, we build up a skill set that can be used across the board. Right. It's okay. a lifetime skill. Can I tell you, math is in everything that we do. Yes. Good. So let us apply this this sequence that we just spoke about. And of course, we spoke about um, you would have done it in other strands before our focus for today would be in measurement and statistic so our first task you can see that we have the sequence here for right. you just to help you to recap and to remember so this is what we have task one the bus schedule shows that buses leave from the transportation center in kingston to morant, morant bay every 45 minutes beginning at 1 25 mm -hmm. pm the last bus departs at 8.10 p.m. Mm -hmm. Buses departing before 3 p.m. have a travel time of 1 hour 20 minutes. Okay. Buses departing after 3 p.m. have a travel time of 1 hour 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Which bus would, uh, would arrive in Morant Bay closest to 6 p.m.? That's a mouth full right we have to ensure now that we actually understand, understand the what the problem is asking yes because this is much this is much okay. so in other words in understanding the problem we're trying to make sure that we break down this question ah. make it into smaller facts bullet points mm -hmm. that will be better able to see what the question is asking can i so, say that the bullet points are manageable they are manageable okay. yes mm -hmm. now step one read and understand what do i know first mm -hmm. the bus leaves at 1 25 from the transportation center in kingston the first bus leaves at 1 25 pm yes good i also know that Every 25, mi uh, Every 45 45 minutes, minutes, a bus leaves the center. Based on the scenario, we know that buses that de depart before 3 p.m. have one set travel time, which is one hour 20 minutes. And buses that depart 
after 3 p.m., they have a set travel time of one hour, 25 minutes. Um, Denise, okay. can I point out too mm -hmm. that in problem solving, your interpretation doesn't necessarily have to be the way that I'm going to interpret it. That is so true. I could be interpret it, interpreting it a step at a time mm -hmm. while you'll be able to do a, a larger Chunk. portion, yes, <laughs> to go a bit faster. Yes. So, so while speed is important, that mm -hmm. is not the main point in problem solving. No. Right. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Yes. What am I asked to find? Well, uh, which bus arrives in Moran to be closest to six? PM. So of all the buses that are leaving Kingston after 1.25 p.m., mm -hmm. based on the information that the question would have given, mm -hmm. which of the buses will reach Morant Bay closest oh, to... Right, so it could be 6 p.m., it could be 5.30, whichever way is closest. closest. It didn't say or exactly at no. 6. Okay, so we have to take that into consideration too. All right. All right, good. Now we have to plan and solve. Now, what strategy could we use? The strategy that we are suggesting, and you have said before, the strategy that I may select may not be the strategy that you at home would select. So there's but the strategy that we share. We now. are sharing no. no. Yes, maybe different from yours. So yes. there is no one way to solve okay. a problem. Awesome. All we right. have to remember that. So our choice we're sharing with you is to construct a table. And here we have the table. The table has the times of departure, the length of the journey, and the times, um, times of arrival. Um, in the departure time, we know that each bus leaves at 125. The PM, first bus the leaves first, thank at you. 125 p.m., yes. but each a bus will leave every 45, 45 minutes. minutes. So from 125, 45, 45 minutes, minutes will take us to? 2.10 p.m. Mm -hmm. and 45 minutes and we keep going until we find a bus closest to the 6 that will be leaving at yes, 5, 5, 5 10. 10. But we are not sure if this bus will reach before Four 6 or after right. or close, which it would be close. Right. Okay, so good. we cannot just look at what no, we have here no. to decide that... Hey, the last bus will give us the answer that we require. Can I say that there are times we hit, we in haste, we construct the table and we make an assumption. We jump into the assumption and say, yes, that is the answer. But we need to take the time. The process is important in problem solving. Today, we're building that process with you. So, buses that leave before three o'clock, there's something special about them. They require one hour and 20 minutes to travel. Okay, good. And the buses that leave after three, three and after? Yes, bearing in mind that the traffic peak <laughs> over all those stuff. And the road might take <laughs> one hour and 25 minutes. Maybe longer, but for this situation, yes. it's over 25 minutes. Okay. Fair. Now, we have this awesome task of now seeing what times, at what times would the bus that leaves at 125 would arrive in Morant Bay. Yes. At what time the bus at 2.10 um, p.m. would arrive in Morant Bay. And we do that until we yes. see which is closer uh, to 6 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Now, this would be basic calculation yes. based on where we're at now. Yes, yes. So in order to find out the length, the time that it will arrive, we just go ahead and do our addition. Yes. To find out that. Yes. The first bus, the bus that leaves at 1.25 will arrive at 2.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. The bus that leaves at 2.10 will arrive at 3.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. The bus that leaves at 2.55 p.m. will arrive at 4.45 p.m. Okay. The bus that leaves at 3.40 p.m. will mm -hmm. arrive at 5.05 okay. p.m. The bus that leaves at 4.25 p.m. will arrive at 5.50 p.m. Yes. And the bus that leaves at 5.10, which is pretty close to 6 now, mm -hmm. will arrive at 6.35 p.m. Question. Am I finished? 
you have not answered the question. Oh, so now I have to check. Even though I've had my strategy, I've actioned the plan, now I have to make sure that I'm answering the question that I'm asked. Yes. Okay. So you need to answer the question, right? Mm -hmm. So what you would have done now is just to put your information together using a table or by constructing a table. Mm -hmm. Now you need to use this table in order to come up with a solution. Yes. So, so which is which time is closer to? The times that I see, I see 5.50 p.m. and 6.35 p.m. Right. And the question wants us to find the which bus that is arrives closest to, to mm -hmm. 6 okay. p.m. 6 p.m. 5.55. How far is 5.55 from 5.50? Sorry, p.m. from 6. That's 10 minutes away from 10 six. minutes. Okay. And 6.35 p.m. How far is we that are away? after 6 now, so that bus would not be the one. If somebody, someone was waiting for you in Morant Bay mm -hmm. at 6 p.m., that person would have left 35 minutes ago. Okay. So, but I want to bring this to you. It says closer. I can be after 6 and I'm three minutes still closer than the 10. And so, it goes back to interpretation. Ah, that is it. <laughs> yes. So this bus is 35 minutes away from 6. Um, the bus that leaves at 5, 10 p.m. is 35 minutes away from 6. The bus that leaves at 4, 25 p.m. is 10 minutes away from 6. And if there is another that, bus too that is 55 <laughs> minutes away, away from, from 6. Yes, which is closer to the 6. The one that's... Um, 10 minutes, 10 minutes away from 35 six, minutes or, or the 55 minutes. So it would be the one that is 10 minutes ten away from 6. minutes away from 6. six. So we, we check our answer. The, in the time the bus departing at 4.45 p.m. arrives the closest to 6 p.m. And that is that would be our answer. Yes? Yes. Yes. So in problem solving, we have to be able to spend the time to understand the problem, spend the time to devise a plan to see which plan works best, depending on the situation. Then we go ahead, we solve, but we have to check and ensure that the problem is answered. Yes. You would have satisfied the requirements Thank you. of what the question needed. Yes. Right, and that is important too. And our units, mm -hmm. whether you want to give that in a sentence, mm -hmm. if, whether you want to just give a, 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 um, just a number, mm -hmm. depending on what is required it to depends on what is required. That problem. Awesome. Now here we have another, we'll just look at the task and you'll get some time to think about it. The task says, show, show not the right are 27 cubes glued together to form a larger cube and um, they were painted yellow. How many of the 27 cubes have face painted, um, one face painted on and how many have two faces painted on? So hmm. sometimes we might be required to read a question twice. Can I tell to you? To make sure <laughs> that you fully understand what yes. the question is asking. Yes, that's true. That's right? true. You can also try pulling it apart because we're trying to interpret the mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember to make note of your bullet points mm -hmm. and then you can use some time to try and act it out. See where this take you. You can go ahead now and select a strategy. Okay, okay, okay. And, and that is what is required. That's what is required of us. As we go through as we go through, we can read, we would have read and understood. We know that there are 27 cubes that were glued together to make a larger cube. And we know that of the 27 cubes, that's what we need to find. How many have one face painted on and how many have two face faces painted, painted on. on? That is what is required. Think about it. As we go to take our break, and we'll be back with more problem solving.
Welcome back to class time, where problem solving in measurement and statistics. So we were at the point, what do we know from the question? Mm -hmm. And we are given 27 cubes mm -hmm. that we are going to be gluing together. Mm -hmm. And of the 27 cubes, how many have one face painted mm -hmm. or two faces painted? So it would be 27 cubes that we're actually gluing together mm -hmm. in order to make a bigger cube. So now, the strategy they are using there is you're actually acting, acting it, it out. out. Yes. You're acting out the strategy. Right. I'm okay. acting it out. So I would have had my cubes mm -hmm. and I'm going to be gluing 27 of these small cubes together in order to make a big cube. Yes. Now, the question asks us to find out, after gluing these cubes together, how many of these cubes would have one face painted? Or how many would have two faces painted? Now, let's examine our cube that we would have connected, right? Looking at it, we can see that here would just have one face painted, right? And if we examine another bigger face, we'll see the one in the middle again with one face painted. So if we should examine the entire thing, we will find out that there are six faces that were painted, that yes. were painted on. Okay, six faces that were painted on. Right. Awesome. Now, um, we could use, act it out, actually put the, the, the cubes together to get the larger cube. And as you would have seen on screen as well, we could have a picture, make a drawing and do the shading. So the other question that we're being asked is to find out how many have two faces painted on. And I would have gone ahead and done the, the, the gluing together of the, of the cubes for you. So when we have the gluing together of the cubes, let us see. Two faces highlighted by the yellow. One, two. One for this face that is out. One, two. For this face here, look at it. One, two. One, one, two. Two faces painted. One, two. So here we have in all one, two, three, four faces painted with four cubes with two faces painted. Yes, and we would have done that for one face on the large cube. Now, if we should turn the cube again, we would go through the process again to identify the number of cubes. Incidentally, when you look at this cube, the ones with the smaller cubes with two faces painted are shown to us in yellow. So again, we have one, with two faces, two with two faces, look at it. Three with two faces, look at it. And four with, and you could go through acting it out. Now for you older students, you would say, um, but I can just make a drawing or I can just use my reasoning. That is a plan that you can, you can, use. However, there will be times when one of the best option for you is to act it out. Use smaller problems to help you to better understand how to actually act it out so that when larger problems come, more difficult problems, I should say, sorry, come, you are able to use the strategy comfortably. And that is what we want to do or share with you today. So when we would have counted all the yellow cubes, because the yellow cubes here show two faces painted. painted. We would see that we have 12. A total of 12. A total of 12 cubes that with two faces, two faces painted, painted out of the 27 cubes. You don't believe me? Try it at home. <laughs> so here Let's we have look at another task problem. Task three. Good. Yes, and we're going to keep reminding you so that the 
problem solving sequence becomes a part of your daily activity. That's right. Understand the problem, yes. devise a plan, yes. carry out the plan, look back. Task three. Mm -hmm. Owen needs to read two books from a list of six books. Yes. How many different combinations of books are possible? That is what we need to find out. That is what we need to find okay. out. No. So in understanding mm -hmm. what information, what do I know? Read two books from a list of six books. That's right. No, did it give us the names of the books? We no, don't need we don't that need to know the name of the book. <laughs> what am I asked to find? The number of possible combination of books from six books, but it's not just any amount of combination. It's really two A combination, combination of with two, two books. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go plan and solve. What strategy? What? We could we use? We could use our reasoning. Yes, we, we could. could and. Remember, we are um, suggesting that there are different strategies too. We could have used an other solution. We could have used a drawing, mm -hmm. a diagram. Mm -hmm. We could have made a model, mm -hmm. right? So it's up to you. For, but for this case, we are going to be using reasoning. Okay. We are going to take a short break. More when we come back. Welcome back. We are problem solving in measurement and statistics. Now let's look back at the question that we break with. Mm -hmm. So we have six books and we need to make combinations of two books. So we need to find out how many combinations we can actually get. Okay. So we read and understood the problem and we know what we're asked to find, the possible yes. combinations. The strategy that we have is use reasoning. Yes, and we are we going said, to be using yes, reasoning. But you did say before the break that we could have used a Any drawing other, or we yes. could have modeled the situation, act it out, That's right? That's right. Go ahead. So here we have the books. We are using the letters A to F 
to describe the book. So we're doing book A, book B, through to book F. Yes. Now, what are the combinations? So I could match a book A with B. Mm-hmm. So we could match a book A with B. Okay. Or A with C. Okay. Or A with D. Okay. A with E. Or A with F. Good. We could also redo this by selecting book B, mm -hmm. but this time we're going to be selecting book B with book C. Why? Why? We would have selected A with B, oh. and if we turn it, okay. do the reverse, it would be the same two books. Okay. Right. So okay. we don't need to go back to A and B. Good. Because right. that is already an existing combination. Yes. Good, good, So good. we don't need to repeat. Mm -hmm. So it's book B with book C, book B with D, B with E, B with F. And we could just re repeat this mm -hmm. to find out the combinations. Yes. Now, after listing these combinations, how are we going to find out the number of combination with two books? Well, we look at it as count counting. Count it. Okay. We just count up the number <laughs> and see that yes. there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It should be 15. 15. Oh, because we didn't have a combination with E F. and F. Okay. okay. But um, you know what is what is important for me here, Shadid? The thing is, persons at home are saying, but hello, I could have done it another way. Good for you. Remember, you want at least five, many ways to solve the one problem. problem. We are just offering you one possible right um, but what they could do is to use a different strategy and see if you will get the same result that is right prove Proof. so i do you do that's we one way of looking back <laughs> using yes, a different strategy that is true yes yes so of course we said that there are 15 possible pairs of combinations from the six books good we're getting into it no no uh, persons also would say that, look here, you're doing problem solving, but I'm going to, I'm going to be doing C-Sec, and I'm doing problem solving with C-Sec and all these things, and I don't see any C-Sec questions. Well, here we go. Yes, just looking at <laughs> it, I'm seeing a quadratic. Oh, my I'm word. I'm seeing P all over, <laughs> and I know that this has to do with algebra. That's right. So we must be into C-Sec now. Okay, it's okay. algebra. Let us see. All right. So a farmer wishes to enclose a rectangular plot with a wire fence. The width of the plot is three meters, less than its length, P. All so right. the width is three meters less than the le its length, P. And Denise, if you notice, you <laughs> repeated it. Yes. It means that reading it again will help With you to understand, understand or interpret the Thank question. You. Now, given that the area enclosed by the fence is 378 square meters, show that, and we come to the quadratic, now P squared subtracting 3P subtracting 378 is equal to zero. So that's what we need to show. That's right. what we need to prove. We're going to show that this is so. Step one. Step one. We read, read and, and understand. understand. What did we understand? I know that the width mm -hmm. of the plot is three meters less. less than its length, and the length is P. Awesome. The area enclosed by the fence is 378 square meters. meters. Good. What am I asked to find? I am to show that, mm -hmm. I'm to prove that, okay. P square is equal to 3P, it, uh, P squared subtract, subtract 3P, 3P subtract, subtract 378 is, is equal to zero. Mercy, let us see if we can prove it now. So how are we going to solve this one? What's my plan right. of action? So we did not take all the information from the question. Okay. It gave us that we are looking at a rectangular plot. Thank you. So, oh, because that is important in order to go solve now. Right, now what does a rectangle look like? I know. <laughs> right. So that's yes. information and that we're pulling necessary. from what we already know and yes. putting it here yes. to help to solve this problem. Okay. The strategy, our strategies we, we use, we can make, make a, a drawing, drawing yes, and write an equation. equation. Good. Good. 
The drawing, what did the drawing look like? So it did tell us that we're working with a rectangle. <laughs> That's true. It did tell us that the area is 378 square, square meters. meters. Yes. Right, and we know what area is. Yes. Enclosed in the figure. Mm -hmm. It also gave us a length as mm -hmm. well as a, a width. width. Okay. So the length in this case is P. P. The width is P subtracting three. three. Now, how do I get P squared subtract 3P <laughs> subtract, subtract 378 to be equal to zero. From all of this? From all of that. But I am going to use an equation because right. I may not be able to answer that just yet. But I know what an equation is Thank and you, you know how, how to find, find the area of okay. a rectangle. Good. So I'm going to write an equation and I start off the area of the rectangle is equal to its length. Multiplied, multiplied by, by its, its width. width. Now we have the information from the drawing, so we're now taking the information from the drawing, placing it into the equation, and this is what we get. Good. So you would have used the drawing to Thank summarize you. the question that you were given. True. Yes. Make it visible so for me. So all the information that you need in order to create this equation is embedded in the drawing. drawing. Okay. okay. So the area of the rectangle is 378 awesome. squared meters. And we know that to find area, length. we use the formula or the equation length multiplied by the width. Which is shown here. It's shown right there. Yes, but I still don't see how we're going to... Let okay. us show me. Since it says show, show all me. All right. So, <laughs> in summarizing all of this, yes. we will see that 378 is actually equal to P into, and I say into because the width would be in bracket. Oh. Brackets. Oh, so this is what this... Okay. Right, so okay, it okay, into okay. will show that it is enclosed in brackets. So it's the length P uh -huh. into or multiplied by the width, which is P, P. subtract oh. 3. You know, I'm seeing a little, I, 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 I think I'm seeing it, you know. Right. Let, me, let us look. Let, okay, So then. we are going to be applying the distributive law. I get it, I get it, I get and it. And you would have been exposed to the distributive yes, law, yes. grades 9, 10, mm -hmm. all, all the way up, yes. right? So you're ready for C6. So P multiplied by P, mm -hmm. and that is added to P multiplied by negative, negative 3. three. Are you seeing the answer? Oh, wow. Okay, so I am seeing 378 is equal to P squared minus 3P, or 3, 3 squared subtracting 3P. And we're going to pull again from the laws of indices. Okay. What is our product when we multiply a number by itself? What? When we multiply a number, mm -hmm. right, or we are multiplying an index number, mm -hmm with the same base, mm -hmm. right? So the index is not really identified, but we know that it's, it's one. Yes, yes. So we can go ahead and- Which is what, how we get the P squared right yes. here. Yes. So P multiplied by P, P, P raised to the first power multiplied by, by P, P raised yes. to the first power will give us P squared. Yes, but they, they know that, you know, because they do the, they do, yes, they they do know the base, that. you know. So we are just putting it ah, into this situation. Good. Just in case, okay. So what, what, what am I, how am I to get it from here to here? So we are to equate this to zero. Okay, how may I equate it to zero, miss? All right, so we need to ensure that in balancing our equation, zero is left on one side. One of the sides. Yes, yes, and in order to leave zero, it's easier for us to just transpose and remove the transpose 378 mm -hmm. than to be transposing Going all, all of the P squared, right. subtracting 3 So P. when we subtract 378 from both sides, yes, then z will, 0 will be left. Oh, but see, see here it is. Yes, here right it there. Is. So here we would is. have answered the question. Yes, we would have answered the question. So we would have shown. But what I want us to appreciate here is that we made a drawing. From the drawing, we pulled all the information. Um, we, we summarized our information. From that, we used our, our equation. Knowledge. Exactly. Previous knowledge, which tells us um, what which of the equations we are to use. Pull the information from the drawing, plug it into the equation, mm -hmm. and then we went ahead. Okay. ahead as 
per usual. Yes. Okay. So it works even for Cisse? It works for Cisse. Okay. So let us go. Oh, please go back one for me. So this, this is another. The mean of four numbers is 71.5. If three of the numbers are 58, 76, and 88, what is the value of the fourth number? Okay. Understand, so we read and understand. Read and understand, what do I know? What okay. information were you given? What do I know? I know that the mean of four numbers is 71.5. Mm -hmm. I also know that I'm given three, three of, of the four, four numbers, mm -hmm. yes, and the numbers that I'm given are 58, 76, and 88. Mm -hmm. What am I asked to find? I am asked to find the value of the fourth number. Okay. I can work with that. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I also know what the mean is. Yes. I know what me yes. I mean. Yes. So that, but so and the I'm, mean would be the end product now. Right. Okay. So you know that gives me an idea for the problem solving right. strategy because I now I'm starting. Okay. With what this. do I do to find the mean? Exactly. What, right. Exactly. So I'm thinking about it. Okay. Now what strategy <laughs> or strategies should I could, try? Could because remember there are more than one strategy. And your that interpretation could be is different from my interpretation. Yes. All and right. My problem solving skills and competencies may be different from yours. Okay. I may be able to solve many problems and so I quickly can pull from the multiples that I have. While somebody else would just have been practicing two and so they are forced to work within the confines of the two. Yes. We don't want that, don't we? All it? right. All so right. for this case, you will be using Working, working backwards. backwards. So from working backwards, as you highlighted before, I know what my end result is. The mean, which is 71.5. Right. The mean is 71.5. Now I'm going back. How do I find the mean again? What did you do to come up with 71.5? The sum of four numbers, four numbers divided by four. four. That's how we found the mean to be 71.5. Yes. Going back to get the sum of the four numbers, we would have had to do what? To get the sum of the four numbers, we would, well, I'm going to say I'm going to multiply the mean by the... By the 71.5 because the, that's the, what, the four numbers by the right. mean. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the step before, it's the sum of four numbers yes. divided by four. So what so did I get, divide by four? What is the sum? Exactly. To get the... Some, <laughs> then what I'm going to do is to multiply. multiply. Do this, the reverse. Do the reverse. Okay, good. 71.5 by 4. So when I do that, that's a um, simple um, computation. It's 286. All right. But I'm not. You were not asked to find the sum. No, you were but asked. that is the total for the four numbers. Right. But I only got three. No, you added four numbers to get. 286, and you only have three of the numbers. We get that, man. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yes, so what I'm looking at is that I have my three, 286. I know that I had to have added 88, 58, and 76, added to another, another number. number which and in this case, you're using N to represent that the number. The one that I don't know. Right. So this... We okay with this? Now. Yes, we are okay. We okay, we are okay with this. So the fourth number would be sixty-four. 64. So what you're saying is we would add sixty-four, seventy-six, fifty-eight, and eighty-eight to get a to. So I'm checking now. We you know to get a total of two hundred eighty-six to find the mean of these four numbers. I would divide by the four in order to get seventy-one point five. Right. So the value of the fourth number. Is actually 64. 64. Awesome. Yes, working backwards fun. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now we have a sixth task. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown has a field in the shape of a sector of a circle with center O mm -hmm. and diameter 25 meters. Okay. Angle POZ is 90 degrees. Okay. Calculate the area and the perimeter of the field. 
in this case, mm -hmm. you are to use pi to be 22 divided by 7. seven. Okay. And are you seeing any form of CSEC coming out right yes, here? Yes, um, this is a CSEC question. This is a CSEC question. Yes. We would have read and understood. And when we read and understood, we know that the field is uh, in the shape of a sector. We know that the center is O. It has a diameter of 25 meters. And there's an angle that is formed to get the sector POZ that is 90 degrees. Good? I'm missing anything? You're not missing no. anything, but we could, while thinking about it, yeah. do some further breakdown to mm -hmm. say that if I have the diameter, then, I'm, then I would automatically have find the, the radius. radius. Because the sector, the, in, if it's a 90 degree and sector. And there is a sector, oh. then it's two radii uh -huh. and an arc that I'm thinking about. That is right. That is right. And what and am I to find? You are to find the area, area and, and the, the perimeter, perimeter of, of the, the field. field. Okay. No, if I would, have, I would have thought about all this information. I know what a sector look like. What strategy am I going to be you using? You see, because I know what the sector a sector could look like. The strategy that I'm using is I'm going to draw a diagram, make the diagram, and I'm going to write an equation. Okay. I make the diagram to make the information clearer for me. So you're summarizing the Thank question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, hmm. it's okay. okay. It's okay. So we would have had the diagram. I'm not sure what happened, but we would have had the diagram. Probably where to find the end of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The perimeter of the sector, as you would have said, would be radius added to radius added to the length of the arc. Now we know what the radius could be. Right? Yes, because we, we were told that the diameter is 25, 25. meters and mm -hmm. we know that two radii makes one diameter. Mm -hmm. If we divide the diameter by two, then we can find a radius to be 12.5 okay. meters. Okay. And of course, we would have known how to find the length of the arc. So we would have written our, our equation. We would have plugged the information into the equation. Mm -hmm. And of course, here we would have had the, um, we use the information pi is equal to 22 divided by 7, and we know that the radius is 12.5. Yes. And of course, it would be for us basic computation, and we would have got our, our perimeter of the sector, which is? No, we would have found the length, the length of, of the, the arc, arc to be oh, yes, yes. 19.64 meters. So what now, in else would I need? find the perimeter, I'm just going to be adding the distance around. Mm -hmm. So the distance around the sector would mm -hmm. be radius, radius, arc, mm -hmm. length right? Of, yes. Length of the arc. We so it would be 19.64 added to 12.5 added plus, to... Mm, Okay. To get a final perimeter of, of 44.64 meters. Awesome. Awesome. So we are okay. Here is the is the, 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 the diagram, which is the, the field. sector. The field. Thank you. Good. So we first we use the equation. We wrote the equation now. Yes. Again, we're using the diagram to assist us. This In time finding we're the finding the area of, of the sector. Right, so we know that the area is the enclosed space within the, the sector itself. Yes. Right, so this is given by a formula mm -hmm. for finding. We can use the equation, mm -hmm. and that is angle divided by 360 multiplied by pi uh -uh. radius squared. squared. Yes. The rest is is The rest is, is just plugging in the information. information and doing the calculations. Yes. And of course at home you would have you would have been able to do this, yes? And before so, you go though, yes. Persons might ask, why am I seeing twenty five divided by by two? And mm -hmm. we need to highlight that we are not using the diameter in the formula, yes. we want to find the, the radius. radius. And the diameter is 25. So the relationship between the diameter and the radius would take so us require here. that we divide by two. Okay, okay, this is, this is. And so, problem solving or task. 
60 students took an algebra test, which comprised 15 multiple choice questions. The number of correct answers that each student obtained is recorded on, on a table or on the table. From the table, we are to determine the number of students who have exactly 13 correct answers, the modal number of correct answers, and the median number of correct answers. Now, what do we have? Yes. What do I know? 60 students took an algebra test. Yes. So the sample space is 60. Good. There were 15 multiple choice questions. Mm -hmm. Information was recorded on a table. Mm -hmm. What am I asked to find? The number of students who had exactly 13, 13 correct, correct answers, answers, the modal number of correct answers, the, mo the median, median number, number of correct answers strategy i'm use using reasoning. reasoning yes you can use whatever <laughs> if you want to model <laughs> yes if, or, act it out, or act it out you could or, go ahead yes you could go ahead but i want i want to just plug here quickly to say that the strategy you choose is heavily dependent on the situation you have the strategy you choose is heavily dependent on the situation you have in this case, we have a table that is illustrated here. So we have the table with our information. We're going to use the table to know reason. Reason. Right? To see. Good. Good. Right. Yes. So there we have number of correct answers, eight, and the number of students, which is six. Um, number of correct answers, nine. The number of students would be 14. And we can go along um, to 15, number of correct answers. And we have 10 students who, have, who got 15 correct. Now, what are we asked to find? We are asked to find the, how many students had exactly eight correct answers. 13. Um, 13 correct, correct answers. answers, sorry. Uh -huh. We need to reason this table out. And in reasoning the table, what does eight correct answers with six students mean to us? If we were to put this in raw data, mm -hmm. I'm acting out the situation. What does eight mean? It would be eight, 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 eight students. Eight. Six, six students, students with eight. eight marks. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So I will be, have a list of eight. Yes. Just six, eight. Raw data. Eight, raw, eight, 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 yes. eight, eight. Six. So mm -hmm. what they want to find is how many students had exactly 13 correct answers. So I could find that on, on a table and see that. It's there 11. are 11 students. Okay, good, good. What are, else are we asked to find? What is the modal number of correct answers? The mm -hmm. modal, it would be the correct answers that occurred most frequently. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we see where 14 students would have had... had Yes. Right. Yes. Nine. Nine, which would be. And then we come to uh, um, what is the median number of correct answers. Now you can go, you can work this for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen at home. What I want you to understand and appreciate is that we have given you the opportunity to use multiple strategies in order to pro solve, problem solve. That's all for today. We've been problem solving in measurement and statistics. Don't forget to tune into our School Time channel on One Spot Media for additional subjects for all ages. Check the timetable. Until then, keep, keep safe. safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.